Hi, I'm Stephen Tallamy. In this video, I'm going to compare the various Spitfire Audio strings libraries to help you maybe decide which library you might want to invest in next. Now, I'm in the very fortunate position of owning every strings library from Spitfire Audio. Now, some of them I bought myself, but quite a few of them I got as a gift as part of the Everything Drive that was gifted to me by Christian Henson. Now, this won't be an in-depth review of any of the libraries, but more just a way to compare the different characters, inspiration and sounds that the different libraries have. There are chapter markers below if you want to skip around. So let's get back to the studio and explore the libraries. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go through the strings page on the Spitfire Audio website and we'll go by that order through the different strings libraries. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just play a long patch on each of these because not all of them have uh, spiccato or other short patches so everything's going to be the long patches and I'm going to also play it like an ensemble so some of these have ensemble patches only some of these have the individual sections split out but what I'm going to do is I'm going to, for comparison, play them all like an ensemble patch. So we're starting with the Hans Zimmer strings. So this is really a very big strings band. You've got 60 cellos. Uh, you can also split those. You've got also then uh, basses, 24 of those, 60 violins, or you can again split those to left and right, uh, violas. So you've got a huge, huge string band. And with that comes a very huge sound. So if we just kind of hit all the way across the keyboard. you can really feel the power of all of those strings. But you can go a little bit quieter, so if we take it down in velocity. But there's definitely a thickness to this sound. So let's compare that now with the symphonic strings and I'm going to just use the ensembles patch here. So if we compare that back to the Hans Zimmer strings And now back to the symphonics. It's definitely a lot brighter and definitely not as thick. Uh, again, what I have done here is I've taken an ensemble patch. The symphonic strings does have all the individual sections as well. So I could have created something similar to what I did here with the Hans Zimmer strings. So now how about Abbey Road 1? Well, Abbey Road 1, as it stands, has a high strings and a low strings. And it also has some individual uh, sections as well. So you can get the selections versions. They don't yet have like split out uh, violins, violas, etc. So you can't get the individual sections, but you can create a simple thing. So here again, what I've done is I'm creating an ensemble patch by using the high strings and the low strings. Let's have a listen to that. So the Abbey Road studio itself is a slightly drier studio than uh, Air Studio. So you're definitely getting a lot more detail here. Let's just compare again between Abbey Road 1 and Symphonics. So for something slightly more detailed, I might be more tempted to use the Abbey Road, although it doesn't have the ability to split out the individual sections as it stands. So now if we go to another space, this is now the BBC Symphony uh, Orchestra. So this one doesn't have any ensemble patches. So if you're looking for an ensemble patch, you're not going to get it here. But you do have all of the individual sections. And this, I think, is much more of a very traditional orchestral sound than maybe the very uh, hyped sound that you're getting from the Hans Zimmers. So 
So let's just compare those three spaces. So Air Studios with the Hans Zimmer strings. Abbey Road. And BBC SO. So even drier space, it seems. Lots and lots of detail. If I was going to do a real orchestral mock-up of a classical piece of music, I'd probably be heading more towards the BBC SO. So now on to the chamber sections, um, and this is probably one of my favourites and many people's favourites, the Spitfire chamber strings. In fact, if I was advising anyone to go and get just one library from Spitfire that had detailed strings recording, I probably would point them towards chamber strings. Again, it's got the individual sections. Uh, I'm just going to play the ensemble patch. So I definitely find with this style of string section, I'm wanting to play something very different. It's not those big and brash uh, string sections. We can take them louder, but they just don't really have that weight that those previous libraries do. But I think for that detailed stuff, this is beautiful. So the next library is the Passionata Strings. Now this library really is all about the legato, uh, but because I want to try and compare like for like as best as I can, I'm just gonna use the sustain patch. Again, we've got the individual uh, sections here, so there isn't an ensemble patch, but I'm gonna use all of them together. So let's listen to this. So definitely a bigger sound again. This time, as it says, you know, it's more passionate sound. It's not sort of a very straight sound. So if you were going for something that was more delicate, this probably wouldn't be the string section for you. Again, most of the power of this is actually in the legatos. So if we take like the violins. Those lines are beautiful to play. So this next is the Spitfire Studio Strings. Now this one doesn't have an ensemble patch, so I've uh, put this out into the individual parts. And this is a much drier space again. So very little reverb there. Now, of course, you can add uh, reverb to it. So if we add reverb to this, maybe using the cinematic rooms patch. then you can really get it out into a larger space. So the benefit of this library is that dryness. It means that you can get a lot more detail. When you're in those larger studios, some of the detail can get lost. Uh, so this is a really good one if you want much more detail, particularly fast moving parts. So now something very different is the chamber evolutions. So these are from Oliver Arnold's. This is a very different kind of playing technique because these are these evolving patches. So if we take uh, this uh, normal, So you can see this is going to be very inspiring for a particular style of sound. I love using these uh, chamber waves in and amongst um, you know, piano parts and others parts. So this isn't going to be a good string library if you want to be writing detailed parts. Uh, but this is beautiful in terms of these swells. And whilst you can try to achieve that with other libraries by using the mod wheel, you really don't get anything quite like the players doing it themselves. So the last of the chambers ones at the moment is the Orchestral Swarm. Uh, so this is, again, a different type of library because this is more about the textural uh, sounds that you can create. Um, 
it splits strings high and low so you don't have the individual sections. Let's just have a listen to it. So this really is a very inspiring cue building patch but definitely not going to be one if you really want to have control over the parts. You want to use it as if you're playing their performance uh, as part of what you're doing. So now onto the Solar and Small and this is the Abbey Road 2. So this is their newest uh, solo patches. So you have the individual instruments, uh, violin, uh, viola, uh, cello and that's an individual person playing those. They have this ensemble patch here, so as we're comparing the ensembles. So you can hear this is a very dry sound, uh, but also very, very detailed. It makes you want to play probably more shorter notes than you do longs. Now again, with all of these libraries, you can add a bit of splosh to them. But I think that ruins the intimacy of this library. This is the album Solstice. There are two uh, main string uh, sections here. There's the classical style and the traditional ones. These are ensemble patches, so you can't split them out. But of course, uh, Albion Solstice has a lot of other instruments uh, in the package, so strings is only one part of it. Let's have a listen first to the classical section. Let's compare that to the traditional side. And again, whilst I'm only comparing the long patches between each of these different string libraries, there's huge amounts of really interesting techniques inside these libraries for a more traditional uh, type of string band that will come from more of the folk uh, side of the house. Uh, Spitfire solo strings now. So again, this is going to be one player. Uh, and in this case, what I've done is I have, uh, again, layered this out in one big contact instrument with both the violins, violas, cellos and bass. So really uh, a great sound inside of the hall of this section. Uh, in many ways, I think I prefer this sound to the Abbey Road 2 sound, which is much more drier. This one, for me, is a, a kind of a more blended sound. However, obviously, if you want that kind of much more upfront, you're not going to be able to take the reverb out of this. Um, and again, you've got the ability here with these kind of solo libraries to do a lot more articulations for the individual pieces, which I think is obviously one of the powers here. Of course, you can take this and then layer it on top of one of the other strings so if you want to bring out a soloist violin player then you can add that to one of the other uh, libraries so there is also alternative solo strings and for some reason they didn't seem to be appearing here um, inside of the string section not entirely sure why but these are um, much more edgy sounds than maybe the solo strings Just compare that back to the solo strings.
So really two very different tones and I think would lead you down different paths compositionally depending on which one you started with. So also in this kind of same uh, world of slightly more alternative techniques, uh, the LCO uh, strings is a great package. Um, again, loads and loads of alternative techniques. If we just listen here, these are the longs or vivid longs. So let's just compare this sound here, maybe back with the chamber strings uh, sound. So definitely a different style of performance. Now, obviously the difference here is that this is not an ensemble patch. There isn't an ensemble patch within LCO uh, strings. Uh, and so maybe if I were to use the chamber strings individual sections, you might get something closer. So now uh, onto the Saccioli strings. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, so these are probably uh, one of the older libraries. Um, you can definitely tell by the GUI, uh, much a, of an older one, but I think this one is a really interesting string library. Let's listen to it. So lots of vibrato there. I would compare this more to the Appassionata strings maybe uh, in terms of uh, a similar style, but I really like this sound. So now Oliver Arnold's uh, Evolution. So this is gonna be a very different uh, library maybe to the others, because again, this is more about textures and using these evolutions, these evolving strings. Now I've pegged everything down one line. Of course, you can mix those around uh, across the keyboard. hugely fragile uh, sounding strings but really really beautiful so uh, also on the sort of fragile style of strings uh, sound you're going to get those within the British Drama Toolkit which again has a lot of other things outside of the strings world but let's have a listen to this I've stacked together again individual parts because there isn't an ensemble section So there's a huge amount of things going on there. That's not just a very pure long sound. That's got loads and loads of beautiful texture, which is going to give you something very inspiring. So now uh, the original cinematic Frozen strings. I think this is one of Christian's new favorites here. Um, of course, uh, within the Frozen range, you're going to be more in the world of flautandos and saltastos. You're not really going to get those harder um, longs. So it's not easy for me to compare these directly. Of course, many of the other libraries do have flautandos, saltastos as well. But this is a beautiful library. We compare that to chamber strings flautando. Back to the cinematic frozen strings.
So definitely a very different sound there. Now on to Heirloom, uh, which again has a whole selection of uh, different instruments. So, you know, strings is only just part of this, but again, a really beautiful, fragile string sound here. So now into the inspiration section. Uh, so Polaris, one of the brand new uh, libraries here. String section on this is brilliant. So the, again, this is a slightly more thicker sound, but really, I guess the point of this library is not the orchestral section, although that's the kind of raw material, but is all these vintage sampling. So taking the VHS version of uh, something similar. So if you're buying this library, definitely you're going to be spending more time in those more processed sounds to stand out to maybe some of the other libraries. And of course, you've got the whole synth section here. So then you've got the ability to blend and use this much more like a synthesizer. So definitely a very different style of library. So some really nice other originals uh, sounds here. These are the original intimate strings. So different to the uh, frozen strings, you've got the regular longs sections here. But then there is also the epic strings. So those are gonna be a bit larger. Let's just compare those two again, so. So you find yourself just definitely going for a different playing style and a different type of inspiration with the epics versus the intimate. So it really depends on where you want to go there. Then we've got a another Evos here. This is the Fragile String Evos. So again, we've got the Evo grid that we can you know peg things all the way across. This is just the Fragile Start. So Let's just compare that back to the Oliver Arnold's Evos. So definitely Oliver Arnold's is much more fragile, in fact, um, much more breaking up, much more character in it. But if you want something slightly purer, then I think these fragile strings are beautiful for that. So seeing as we're in the evolutions, well, let's have a look at these angular versions. So these ones are definitely going to cut through a lot more than the uh, fragile evolutions. They're going to give you a lot more passion, but they're also much more aggressive or much more distorted sounds here. So 
So I think if you're going for something really tense, something horror, then this is going to be a great library for you. There are some of these effects also in some of the other string libraries as well. So this is the Albion Tundra. Uh, this is the On the Edge of Silence, I think they called it at the time. So I think this really did influence uh, much of the Spitfire strings recording, uh, particularly obviously the flautando. So there's no regular longs here, but obviously the flautandos are beautiful. So in the include string section, we've already seen Solstice. So let's have a look at Albion Neo. Uh, here we've got strings A and B. So they actually split the band uh, Divisi. So you can have an even smaller band if you really want. So I'm going to play strings A and B together here just on the long patch. And if I take out strings B, back in again. So you can really choose there the sort of thickness of the string section. Let's just compare this back to the trusty chamber strings. back to the neo strings and I think one of the favorite things to do here is mix and match the two string sounds so take a flautando and then maybe take something like harmonics So uh, the symphony orchestra, we've already seen the symphony strings, um, but actually in that bundle, and I think you can't buy these on their own anymore, is the massive strings. And they've got these Ligeti strings, which are really interesting. Albion One is a classic library, uh, one of the first ones I bought. It does have a string section, but they're not split out at all. So it's just the whole of the string section you're playing, not highs and lows, not the individual parts. Now I find these are often a little bit sort of pad-like sounding. They're quite nice, but actually what I do like in this section is the uh, Colenio. And then the low octave shorts. Um, but of course Albion One has a huge amount of other stuff and I tend to find myself more going into the synth sections, uh, the drum sections, etc. So here is the Bernard Herrmann uh, strings, a very different sound uh, to the others, I think. So they've done a brilliant job of capturing the sound you might have expected from a Bernard Herrmann score. Let's just compare that once again to maybe the Hans Zimmer strings.
So a hugely different character uh, between these two libraries. So they do have um, the Estatica uh, um, library here. That is just uh, an individual cello sound, um, quite distorted, very interesting sound, but I couldn't really compare it to the others because it doesn't really have anything that I could build an ensemble out of. There's also some great stuff inside of Labs, um, but the, you can go and download those and try those out for yourself. Um, hopefully this was a useful comparison of some of the different string sounds. Now, by only using the long patches, I've obviously narrowed this through a particular lens of comparing the libraries, and there's much more depth than I could cover in one video. Do you need all of these libraries? Well, certainly not. This is not a game of trying to complete your Spitfire collection. However, having all of this choice is great for composers because it means we can be making different music with different sounds. So then, which library should you pick? Well, that really is a big depends. It depends on what kind of music you're going to write. If you want to do a large orchestral mock-up, then probably I'd be heading somewhere towards the BBC SO library. If you want a big string sound, then probably Abbey Road 1 will do you very well, or if you can stretch to it, the Hans Zimmer strings. Now, if you're looking to draw inspiration from the sounds, those performances by the musicians, then probably something like the Olafur Arnold's Chamber Waves will do you really well, or some of the other selections in that area. Now, for me personally, if I were to have one strings library, then it would be the Spitfire Chamber strings, because I really like the flexibility of having the ensemble patches, but also the individual sections. And I think the sound of the chamber strings is beautiful and really fits the aesthetic I like to go for usually when I'm writing. So the answer usually when anyone asks me, well, what strings library should I buy? I will always ask them, well, what are you trying to use it for? So please, if you do have that kind of question, please leave a comment in the section below. If you've enjoyed this video, then do please give it a thumbs up, share and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.